Now we're going to talk about the process by which cells become determined to a specific path. Like we said, cell determination is the process of changing the gene expression of that cell. And this happens either by having cytoplasmic determinants or by interactions between neighboring cells. Let's look at cell determination by cytoplasmic determinants. So these are particles that are placed in the egg since the moment that the egg forms and this, this particles, like you see here, in this case are pigmented, they give the embryo an orientation type of um, direction. So if you look at this uh, microscopic image, you have here the cells that are starting to divide and the cytoplasmic determinants are placed at the bottom of the cells. When those cells divide, those that divide from the bottom will have more or high concentration of the cytoplasmic determinants than the cells that divide from the top. And this will continue happening, and so the cells here at the bottom will have a higher concentration of cytoplasmic determinants than the ones at the top. And the gradient that forms between these cells determines or tells to the embryo which side is going to become the ventral side of the embryo, or say the belly side of the embryo, and which will become the dorsal side or the back side of the embryo. So as this embryo develops, this side that has the higher concentration of cytoplasmic develop, uh, determinants knows to develop into a ventral side, while the top will develop into a dorsal side. Another way in which cells become determined is by interaction with neighboring cells. So here, cells in the anterior part are producing this FGF signaling, and they're telling the cells around it what they are supposed to become. So these cells are signaling the neighboring cells that they should become something different to what they've already committed to be. And these two pathways can interact to produce an even richer array of options for the cells. So cells can have, if they have a specific cytoplasmic determinant and a specific type of cell interaction, then they can become cer a certain type of cell that if they just have one, um, a different type of determinant and a different type of interaction. This will be more evident in the next slide. So in this example, cells can have either the match of cytoplasmic determinant or not, so it's either present or it is not, and they could receive the signal from the neighboring cell or not, and whether which way they go in this path, whether they have the cytoplasmic determinant and they receive the cells, the signal from the neighboring cell, that would commit them to a specific path than if they have the cytoplasmic determinant but they do not receive the signal from their neighbors, and so forth. So combining cyto the presence or absence of cytoplasmic determinant with the presence or absence of cell signals from neighboring cells can place the cells in either one of these pathways. So they either become mesenchyme cells, muscle cells, notochord, or nerve cells. So let's back to here, and if the matches determinant is present and they receive the signal from the neighboring cell, those cells will become mesenchyme precursor cells. If on the other hand, they receive the cytoplasmic determinant but they do not get the signal from their neighboring cells, then those cells will become muscle cell precursors. And like I said, we have four possible combinations. The next combination is there is no cytoplasmic determinant, but they do get a signal from the neighboring cell, and under this scenario, cells become notochord cells. Finally, if they don't get neither the cytoplasmic determinant, neither the cell signal from the neighboring cells, then they will become nerve cells. So these are the four combinations of getting cytoplasmic determinants or signals from neighboring cells resulting in four possible types of cells. To summarize, gene expression is the tight orchestration of the activation of certain genes at a particular place in a particular time. And this happens by 
the control of cytoplasmic determinants that are present in the cell and interactions between the neighboring cells. And as we go with each step, we can calculate exactly what is going to happen at each particular point in development. So we have genes that are activated as soon as fertilization happens. We have other genes that would activate just a couple hours after. And those genes would uh, turn other genes that will result in new genes being activated. So this, all these developmental genes are acting as transcription factors, activating other sets of genes that would increase the um, accuracy of what genes need to be expressed at what point and in what location.